Hi, I'm Deborah, and I'm going to give you a quick update of how our test garden is doing now. I want to start with this entrance that has really grown beautifully. Um, we have these state fair zinnias that are like a magnet for monarch butterflies and bees. And also the artichokes here are growing very nicely. We're probably going to harvest a couple of them, but um, also let some grow to flower because they are so beautiful in flower. Um, this arch is two of our titan arches that we put together and Kevin from Epic Gardening started a loofah challenge this year so it encouraged me to try loofah for the first time. Apparently they're edible when they're young but then after they get big and you dry them you can turn them into natural sponges so if you want to try to avoid plastic in your personal care that could be a way to do it. Um, we also have some Tetra squash, it's a variety of delicata squash growing in here. And inside I also have some sweet potatoes. It's a little crowded in there, but um, there's a nice soil depth that goes to about here. So it seems like the planter can handle it. So one product that we're coming out with next year that we think you guys will love is a um, wall trellis. I can't show you too much about it because it's still in development, but it's covered with scarlet runner beans, which the hummingbirds and the bees are loving, and the beans are just starting to come out now. So pretty excited about that. So this is our victory planter and we're coming out with a vine version trellis of that and our victory planters with the tomatoes are doing really well. The uh, fruit's starting to ripen. Um, this is a Missouri love apple, pink love apple variety and there's loads of fruit in there. Um, this I was just kind of trying to grow corn for fun. This is a striped japonica variety and in case you you guys haven't grown corn yet before how it gets pollinated is the tassels up there in the wind they'll release some pollen and it falls onto the silks and each silk leads to a kernel once it gets pollinated so if um, someone was curious about growing corn but they didn't have a field to plant it in you could try it in a container and we've got a few different ears happening um, I put this up to kind of see if the squirrels will avoid them with this spiky cat scat mat that we have, but I don't know if that's going to work. They might just crawl right over it, but giving it a whirl. Um, this is a t get stuffed tomato is the variety here. And it's really pretty with the orange stripes in there and it's hollow. So it's good for stuffing with things like rice and cheese and baking them in the oven. So that'll be delicious. Our hemp plant is doing very nicely. Now that the nights are getting longer, it's starting to get ready to go into flower because um, it's trying to set seed before the season ends. And I probably should be fertilizing it a little bit more. It's looking a little light green, but other than that, it's enjoying being in the container. This eggplant is doing very nicely. We've got a lot of fruit in there that's ready to harvest. So the testing of our victory planters is going very well. This bed I really like. Um, if you only have a small space, you can still do a mix of plants that are companion plants. And we've got um, carrots. This is a yellow variety and a red variety. Purple basil. And this is a Castelludo tomato, Castelludo Genovese tomato, which is an old Italian heirloom tomato. And they're really delicious and also beautiful. And they're in our vertex cage, which we have two sizes of it. I just wanted to show you one of the features is that you can open up the sides and put it around an existing plant, which if you forget to put a support around your plant and they start getting big, it's a nice thing to be able to do. And then at the end of the season, it just folds up nicely. It's super light and you can just fold it away for winter storage. This is a sesame plant where um, sesame seeds come from, and this is a black and tan, so I'm thinking that the seeds in there are going to be black and white when they're ready, and they come out of these really cool seed pods, and they have these pretty purple flowers. 
Um, this is the indigo. It's a Japanese indigo plant where natural dyes come from. So just last week I harvested them down there about this tall, harvested the stems and they're now in the greenhouse drying and we're going to figure out how to extract the natural dye from them. So this is a volunteer tomato plant which means that the seeds got dropped last year and it planted itself in the gravel and started growing and now it's actually getting ripe fruit on it. So I spend a lot of time starting things from seed indoors under lights, taking care of them, getting them to transplant stage, hardening them off, planting them, fertilizing, giving them care. And then, you know, it's funny that this one just kind of did it on its own without any, any maintenance from me at all. So that's the power of plants. So these are some new foldable tomato supports um, that we're coming out with next year and they're testing out really nicely. But I wanted to also show you this variety of tomato called Lucid Gem. They're really beautiful. They start out with a purple top and the green bottom and then when they ripen they turn into this really bright orangey yellow color and they're really quite delicious. And this is a yellow pear, and I think that looks really nice against this teal blue color that we're gonna be offering. This eggplant is doing really well too. It's loaded and it's time to harvest. This is a really great variety of hot pepper. It's called the Buena Mulaca, and I don't think there's too many varieties of hot pepper that are purple, so I'm really enjoying that. And these are the Shishitos which just keeps producing with our organic fertilizer. It seems to be doing really well. So thanks for watching and happy gardening.